Hello and welcome back to another Classic WoW video. So today we will talk about the best way to spend your time in Classic WoW right now, or rather a few different ways you can spend your time to optimize efficiency in Classic WoW. This will obviously be from a gold maker's perspective, since making gold is what I enjoy doing in the game. Now before we get any further into this video, I'm going to make this video based on TBC coming out as an expansion, meaning we get to keep our items, golden characters, moving into TBC. This is important because this is pretty much a video about optimizing your time in Classic to set yourself up for TBC. So this video will be split into several parts, but all of them consists of things you can spend your time doing now, which you will thank yourself for doing later down the road. I will try to give you several alternatives, just in case one of them isn't really appealing to you. So first off, what have I been doing with my time lately? Well, I am currently leveling 4 different characters and juggling rested experience between all of them. This way I get the most experience per hour while leveling, by utilizing that rested experience bonus. If I play them for an hour or two per week, I can pretty much burn through the entire rested experience. You're gonna have more or less characters, depending on how much free time you personally have, and based on how many characters you want, and how much you want to play per week. First off, having a level 60 mage is fairly crucial for gold making in Classic WoW and also will be in TBC as well, so if you don't have a level 60 mage yet, leveling 1 is probably the best investment of your time. Additionally, Protection Paladins have some really good AoE farming possibilities in TBC, so leveling a Paladin now will save you from having to do so when TBC comes out. If you are a raider, Warlocks are pretty awesome in TBC as well. Basically, pick some classes you want to level and just go for it. Even if you're not planning to play on those characters, you can actually make tons of passive gold on them. Personally, I have tailoring on all four of the characters I am leveling, and I craft Moonclaw on all of them on cooldown to make a lot of passive gold as well, which is really nice to have. In TBC, you can expand further on this, because there are 3 to 4 different types of cloth, like Moonclaw, which has a shared cooldown. And if you're max level and max skill in TBC, in tailoring, you can craft double amounts of those after having done your tailoring specialization quest, which we will cover in a tailoring video closer to TBC launch. Basically, you'll want several tailors at level 70 in TBC to make passive gold all throughout the TBC expansion, so why not just start now and capitalize on the passive gold through Moonclaw as well? You can also pick up alchemy and either transmute arcanite on cooldown, or you can transmute on death to water, which requires buying the recipe and make gold that way as well. So level up ults as much as you can, and you'll thank yourself for it later down the road. Passive gold is always good to have. Next up, level a mage if you haven't already done so, and if you have a mage, sell dungeon boost. Scarlet Monastery boost, Moradin boost, Stratholm boost, Sulgrub boosts, whichever one you're most comfortable with, and yields a good gold per hour. There has also been tested some AQ20 and AQ40 farms as well, that might be viable for mages, and there is definitely gold farming possibilities in Naxxramas as well as a mage. So even if you think you're too late for the Set G hype train, you can still make tons of gold as a mage in Phase 5 and Phase 6. Farm as much as possible and either sit on that gold, or invest it by watching my investment videos and follow the steps covered there. I would recommend having at least 5000 gold going into TBC, so you can secure yourself that epic mount as soon as possible, as having that mount is crucial to open world farming, especially for herbalism and mining. One thing to keep in mind here is that it is important to have at least 5k gold for epic flying, but gold will also be a lot more accessible in TBC. There will be more liquid gold in the game, raiders will technically need way less gold for consumables, unless the price of the consumables skyrocket. There is no TBC version of Black Lotus, and yeah, basically I think raiders will be more willing to throw away gold in TBC than they are in Classic WoW, and the average player will have more gold in TBC than in Classic which will increase the value of all gold farms and all dungeon boosts, which is why I think that your time right now is best spent by farming up a decent amount of gold but not over farming, and rather spending most of your time leveling new alts, since you don't want to be forced to level an alt from 1 to 60 
in TBC. Finish as much leveling as possible before TBC comes out, as long as it comes out as an expansion. Obviously this could all backfire as Blizzard has said they are considering giving people free level 58 boosts in TBC, but we don't know if that will become reality, nor if there will be a limited or unlimited amount of level 58 boosts. Like if you only get one level 58 boost, you'd still want more level 60 plus characters for that passive gold. I know that right now a lot more people have a lot more free time because of the current things happening in the world, so if you feel like you're starting to get burnt out from playing classic, seriously, just level a new character or several new characters and have a good time while doing it. Grab some friends if you want to level together, do some dungeons, and enjoy what the game has to offer. Additionally, keep any jewel crafting or blacksmithing materials you find. Yes, I know, jewel crafting is a TBC profession, but what I mean here is keep any of the ores and gems you find if you choose mining as your profession while leveling, as I think jewel crafting and blacksmithing materials will skyrocket in price before TBC launch and in TBC as well. I'll cover that more in a future video as well. Basically at this point we're waiting for phase 5 of Classic WoW to come out, and once phase 5 is out there will be a lot more raids to do on the weekly rotation. Some raiders still need loot from Molten Core and Solgurub and definitely Blackwing Lair as well. Then AQ40 and AQ20 also needs to be added into the weekly rotation, so if you're a semi-serious raider you'll pretty much be raiding every single day. This means that you should start playing on other characters than the one you're raiding on now while you can, and while you actually have the time to do so. While we are talking about raiding, if you can get a group of 5-10 to 10 people together, either in a guild or in a discord, you can form gold bid raid runs, and I cannot even begin to express how insane this is. Be 10 people from the same guild, or just no 10 people, host a gold bid blackwing lair run, and you'll potentially be looking at 1k gold each, more or less, depending on the loot that drops and if you need any loot yourselves. You can also do this in Sulgirub where you can either do it solo or duo. In this case be a tank or a tank and a healer, and look for DPSers with some gear and knowledge that still lack some big pieces they might be willing to spend gold on. This was a very good gold making option at the start of phase 4 but has become much less efficient now because a lot more players have gotten the gear they need, but still, it serves as a testament to how good the gold bid raids are, and I would imagine you can get some pretty good gold if you sell gold bid AQ20 runs at the beginning of phase 5. So if you are a group of 5 to 10 close friends that all are raid geared, have an interest in raiding, have some knowledge and some skill, seriously, form gold bid raid runs. Even if you're doing Blackwing Lair and AQ14 with your guild, sell Goldbeard runs in Molten Core, Set G, and AQ20, and maybe even on Ixia as well. It's a very good way to make gold as any class as long as you know how to lead boss fights. And in case you're not interested in gold making but you still made it this far in the video for some reason, let's just quickly mention some other things you can spend your time on. Make a twink. Do a levels 1 to 60 challenge. Speed leveling challenge, boar challenge, and etc. Iron Man challenge. Smashing that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Grind to rank 14 in PvP. Role play, grind the mount in Stratholm for insane bragging rights. World PvP, level alts, and so on. But since I'm an alcoholic, I'm spending my time leveling alts, and by having tailoring on all of them, I will get some nice passive gold income as well, which doesn't involve me having to play much more than I want to. And even if I don't want to farm for gold, I can still make over 100 gold per week just by logging on and crafting stuff, which I think is awesome. Now this is just how I personally spend my time in Classic WoW, while having fun and trying to optimize my time for gold making efficiency at the same time. And I thought I'd make a video on it just in case it helps some of you. Maybe even it sparks an idea of what you can spend your time on in case you're feeling bored of the game and need something to do. It's a video I have wanted to make for a while, I didn't really know how to make it or how to write it, nor when to release it, but I think now is the perfect time for this video so here it is. Massive thanks to all of my patrons for your incredible support, honestly I appreciate it so much, so thank you thank you thank you. If you want to become a patron and reap the benefits of being a patron, you can do so by clicking my Patreon link in the description 
or by clicking the card at the end of this video. And if you are a patron and have any questions about gold making, you can DM me at any time. That's it for this video guys, remember to give it a like if you liked it, subscribe for more videos, and until next time I'm out, peace.